But look out. Here comes Bonsignor. Welcome to the JDB Productions Podcast. Oh, roll, Trouble but... here on the front stretch. One car hard in the outside wall. Interviews with the biggest stars. And I, I, I can't give it up enough to this team, uh, but especially Tommy Baldwin, man. I've had a lot of fun with him over the years, and it's just getting better. Go behind the scenes. In-depth storytelling. Catch up on all things JDB. Yeah, there are JDB Productions and Josh Maneda. Uh, the JDB Productions Podcast. Your champion starts now. Welcome to episode number seven of the JDV Productions podcast. Today, my guest is Dylan Kutu, driver of the number 53 NEMA Light. Dylan, welcome to the JDV Productions podcast. Yes, thank you for having me. Oh, you bet. You bet. So Dylan, tell us a little bit. I mean, it's going to be hard for people to believe you've been in racing as long as you have, but tell us how long you've been involved in racing and a little bit more about your history in the sport. So this is going to be my 12th season in in racing. I'm only 16 years old. I started in that five and quarter minutes when I went to the 2012 Frank Murata car show and I found Silver City and I went to the Frank, so I went to the Frank Murata car show and then I found and then they had an arrive and drive a couple weeks later. I went to that. I was hooked. And then we bought my first car the next day and the rest of history. That's fantastic. So you start driving quarter midgets. How long do you how do you long do you spend behind the wheel of, of those cars? I was in them from 2012 to 2020, which is nine seasons. Okay. And you traveled from here to Pennsylvania yep. um, and New Jersey. Where else did you race? So I raced at Wall, a little wall in New Jersey. I raced at Oak Lane in Pennsylvania. I raced at Honeybrook in Pennsylvania. I raced at Little T in at Little Thompson. And then I raced at Silver City primarily. Fantastic. And I went, and I went to Donaldson for a USAC event one time. What was that like? That was interesting. They had the track actually set up like Donaldson. So it was big at one end and smaller at the other. And then, but it was like a, like an auction lot so it was downhill so you were actually going downhill into this tiny little corner it was not very it was they did not think about that when they built the track let's just say that wow okay that sounds it that sounds really <laughs> that sounds really interesting excuse me yeah. uh so after that you decide and you're gonna take your hand at nema light so i mean i understand the similarities generally between um the USAC cars and, and the NEMA lights, but what was it that drew you to the NEMA light cars? So it was actually in a, around 2019, we were, we were at the speedball and the NEMA lights happened to be racing that day. And they were, they would race three, three, sometimes four wide uh, at Waterford. And my mom was like, you know, these look fun. They look a lot like a quarter midget. And that was like, my mom was like, yeah, there's no way we can afford one of these. Well, I started to get looking into it. And it, we actually found out that they're a lot cheaper than, than a, initially that it looks and so it was actually quite feasible and everything that i learned in quarter midgets transferred right over and it's our setups are the same pretty much to, or to scale it's all of it's the same that's cool so you start in 2019 you did a couple of races or 2020 2020 i ran two races at star speedway in new hampshire as part of the driver development program Okay. And you, you, you're hooked right away. Yeah. It was first time I went out on the track for practice before I had even raced. And it was, my dad was nervous all night. He didn't sleep the night before my first time. He just envisioned me forgetting to lift and going off into the trees, but you know, he was pleasantly surprised. That's fun. So, th so then you decide that you're going to do a full season Yep. And you you turn in your first first full season in 2020 21. 21. Um, so tell us how did that go? That went they went better than expected. I finished 10th in the points. I and that was with missing two races. So and I crashed in our first race. So I yeah, was, you did but you learned a lot. Yeah, I learned a ton. I had my I had a best finish of third at the Star Classic. And I, I was fighting for top fives. I had a few top fives late in the season. At that season, I got my first my first podium or my first top five. Or one of my first top fives was at Lee. <laughs> was that Lee at for Oktoberfest? Yep. And so, so you you come back in twenty two. Mm -hmm. 
and 22 is a pretty good year for you. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was all right. <laughs> I think that's your mom laughing in the background. Yep. So so wh- why is she laughing? I mean, you, you finished in the top five in points. Something yep. kind of big happened at Lee USA Speedway. Yep. So I finished our first race was at Thompson. I finished third. On a, I passed Avery Store for third with a couple laps to go on a move he, he told me to do. And it was kind of funny. So that like that, and then I went to the next race was your it was your guys's I believe first race, yep. and it was the Grand State Derby, and I I started fourth, and I was in second by like lap five, and then lap seven there was a caution, and I on the restart I drove I drove into turn one, so I couldn't see the other car anymore, and <laughs> never looked back. Yeah, fantastic. And so now that brings us to 2023. So you just gave us the brief history of the 14 years of your racing career. Um, you've been you've been racing more than you haven't in your life, which is amazing. So you talked a little bit about what attracted you to the NEMA lights um, just when you were at Waterford. Um, tell us, talk a little bit more about that. What else besides the fact that they were racing three and four wide excited you about those types of cars? It was, it was just like, Anything we could afford to race was like a mini stock and like stuff that's like, yeah, my dad's going to spend half. It's mostly him. I'll admit it's mostly him. I'm at school and whatnot when he's, when he's home. So it's mostly him working on the car. He can do it all by himself with a mini stock. You'd never make the car faster. You'd be beating out fenders all week, which is, and, and, and everyone looks at a midget and they're like, there's no way that is safe. But that's the biggest, and, and it's true, but it's the that is the biggest safety factor in it because everyone knows they're dangerous. So they race with respect and they race clean and they give you room to where we, we rub wheels once in a while, but it's like, it's not like we're not jumping, we're not jumping wheels and all the time. Right. Cool. So your dad, you talked a little bit about what your dad thought when, before your first race, he couldn't sleep. He's got visions of you going into that barn in turn one at star speedway. Um, yeah. What did your mom think? My mom was not nervous at all. I, I, and it's usually the other way around. My mom is usually the anxious one. And my dad's like calm, cool and collected, but with, with racing, he's not that way. It's just, it's always been that way. He's, he's sweating bullets right now waiting for a nan knock. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're sweating bullets too, but it's because we're excited. Yeah. <laughs> So you are the defending NEMA light champion of the Granite State Derby. We're going back to produce that event again uh, this week. This year, it's going to be on Memorial Day weekend at Lee USA Speedway. So that's your first and only win to date in the NEMA lights. Uh, But we know there are a lot more coming in your future. How did it feel to collect your first win on such a big stage right in front of the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour and a really full crowd at Lee USA Speedway? I mean, I I really couldn't believe it, but like I, I... I went to go get out of the car. I, I, I just sat there. Like, I, I took my, I shut the fuel off. So that way, the, you know, and then I, my, at that point, my hands were at the back of the quick release. So I just kind of quickly flipped it up, sat down. I just sat there. It wasn't until, like, everybody got there that I actually kind of comprehended what, what, what the heck I just did. <laughs> it was like, and then, and then the, the, to realize, I remember, I remember looking up around five to seven laps to go. I looked up at the board and I saw Jake Trainer was coming, was coming. And I was like, oh, this is great. Um, <laughs> So I just kind of kept driving, but I was uh, ended up being if that race was another lap, I wouldn't have won. But that's why the that's why the races are twenty five. Was that's why that race was twenty five laps, not twenty six. Yeah. That's right. It was a twenty five lap race. That's all you needed. You still got that JDV Productions Champions hat on, which I love yep. to see. That's uh, fantastic. So Lee's been a good track for you. You mentioned in your um, you finished well at the Oktoberfest. You come back in the next spring the spring of 22 and win the race we just talked about. What is it about that particular venue that you connect with and you just race really well there? I don't know if it's me, my dad or what, but with the kind of the combination of both the, the setup and it's just a driver's track. If it's loose, it's almost like a dirt track. You just drive it sideways because everybody else is sideways too. So it's like, and then it makes it hard. It makes you hard to pass. So, and it's just, is it the slick? Cause that tracks, I don't think that track's ever been repaved in like a long time. So that track, it's just been beaten in the sun. It's, it's like, it's like a beat. It's just got a beaten pass for that. It's just slick. It is. Yeah. Drive, drive. I had some, I had some friends there watch to watch me race and they were sitting off before 
and they just kept seeing when I won. They just literally were like, uh, my wheels were like 45 to the to the wall. <laughs> and they were just kind of waiting for me to overcorrect. <laughs> So it's you mentioned the abrasive surface, Italy. We talk about that a lot. Um, and the race for the Wheel and Modified Tour is 175 laps. Mm-hmm. It's a six tire race. It's our only pit stop race. Um, and you need those six tires because of the fact that the track really eats up the Hoosier rubber. Um, you know, and it makes it uh, entertaining from that perspective. You've got two different pit cycles going on. But in your case, I mean, there's probably some other things that are going on, which is not only is it an, an, an abrasive track surface, but you've also got all those different types of divisions who are competing that weekend. And by the time you guys went out, you raced right before the Wheel and Modified Tour. The track was really rubbered up. Oh, yeah. And then it's it's funny. We go to tracks. Like I went to Seacon once. I went out before the tour was on the track. I was so happy with my car. We went out for our heat races after the tour hits the track and the, the track completely changes after the tour mods at the track. It's like with the, that wide tire and the compound, it's just, it, it's, it's a beaten. It's just, you get, you'll, you'll one lap, you'll go into the corner and it'll get loose. And then the next lap you'll go into the same corner and it'll get tight. It's like, it's just, it's unpredictable with the mods and it's, and it makes it fun, especially at Lee because it, it's typically looser, but like the tire, yeah, quite literally, like you're saying with Atlee, does we get tires? We we typically we go to a track, we take our tires and we flip them, and we run it for practice the next week. No, we go to Lee, we 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 take them off the tire and we chuck them like they're they're junk. <laughs> Absolutely done. So you were texting with me the other day, and you told me a a cool story about your time in in the Nemo Light Division, and that's that you got to race with Kent Schrader. Yeah, that that was. When I heard, I was thinking it's a race with Ken Schrader. And this year, I, I've heard that Sammy Swindell is going to drive a bird train car at the at the Boston Louis this year. And I'm like, that, that is just so cool to me. And I heard, I've heard i heard rumors that Chase Briscoe might be possibly coming for the for, for the Boston Louis this year for the lights, too. Wow. That's the same weekend as the, as the NASCAR race at Loudoun. So, okay. So I, I've heard that. I don't know if it's true yet. I hope it is. That'd be pretty awesome. But the race with Ken Schrader, it was, it was so cool because my dad grew up loving Ken Schrader before, like kind of but, but along with Bill Elliott. But so it was, and my mom has a Ken Schrader hat. So I got, I got his autograph and I, he actually came up to me to talk to me one day. And I thought that was the coolest thing because he, I was like, to me to walk up to him, that's probably normal for him. Every like, you know, young kid walks up to him, but for him to walk up to me, I was like, I was shocked. Yeah. What did you guys talk about? We were just kind of talking about the line. I, I haven't the I'm not the best to see kind of, I started to figure it out now, but it's just, it was just like ridiculous. I was like, I was like, is he really, I, I couldn't believe it after he left. I was like, did I just have a, I walked off to talk to, to talk to my parents. And I was like, I, I did I just have a conversation with Ken Schrader? Like, <laughs> Like, am I dreaming? <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. I mean, you guys have had quite a few, um, you know, prolific drivers compete in the either the full blown midgets or in the NEMA lights uh, throughout the years. I mean, the NEMA lights have an incredible 70 year history uh, in New England, and there really there really aren't any other cars like them in our area. Uh, you think about there's really only three types of winged cars, the, the super modifieds, um, I guess four, you get the super modifieds, the 350 supers then Nima Midgets and then the Nima Lights. Um, and when you see them, I mean, they just stick out. Um, they're really cool cars. Um, and I was a huge fan and still am of the fact that the Nima Lights have starters in them. I think that that makes them a lot more fan friendly. Um, and the fact that the race can start sooner, um, that it can attract drivers like you who are 16 years old. Do you even have your license? I just got my permit on Saturday. Okay, so you've been you've got you could be, you ha, you've been driving your Nima Light race car, but you just got your permit Saturday. So congrats on that. Um, you're head, so you're heading into your what'll be your third season now with the Nima Light division. What are some of your goals for the 2023 season? Every year we just kind of we go in and we just want to. I want to start the last year. I might to start in one race because I wrecked in practice, but I want to start all the races this year. I want to finish. I got zero DNFs last year. I want to do that again. We had a couple mechanical failures. We had one at Seekonk, and I think that was it. I want to, I want to try and have as little as po- those as possible. And the goal is obviously always not to wreck, but I can't control that. So, right. 
Well, those are, I think those are some good goals. I mean, and if you achieve those, there probably are a lot of other good things that can happen if you can start every race and you can have no DNFs. I imagine that'll put you even a little bit better than your fifth place finish in 2022. Yeah. I think, and I think my dad looked this year, I think we were the only team in the, in the Nemo lights that didn't have a DNF because even, even the Seymour's had one DNF. I, I think they had, they ran somebody else's car or whatever, and they didn't finish. So you've got two, the, your first two races are both JDV events. One's at Manadnock Speedway. And at the time from our recording, it's just over three weeks away. And then the second one will be the race you won last year, which is the second annual Granite State Derby. Uh, but obviously the NEMA lights travel around New England. What races or, or race or races are you looking forward to the most this season? I'm, I'm obviously looking forward to our three races at Lee, our two races at Waterford, that's another track I love. It's you know five. It's thirty minutes from my house. So this and that track is so it's so fast. It's unbelievable. And then with Cassett in Maine, I, I love that place too. Same thing with Waterford, pretty much. It's those. Those are probably my three favorites. So what are your what do you like about Waterford and what do you like about West Cassett? It's just so much on there all the time. It's like driving a quarter minutes all over again. It's like I, I don't have I don't I, with Cassett. I don't have to lift. And at Waterford, I only have to lift because of the line I run. And it's hardly, it's like, a, it's like a blip. It's like half throttle for like half a second. Got it. What, so what, uh, what are your lap times at those two tracks? Do you know? Off the top of my head, I couldn't, I, they're, they're quick. I think I run, I think I'm in like the 15s at like low, high 14s, low 15s at, Waterford, I want to say. Those are quick. So the what are the SKs running there? Do you know for lap times? I think they're running 15, like mid-15s. So that's amazing. So you're you're moving as you're moving around the racetrack in as fast, if not a little bit quicker, than the SK modifieds. Yep. I'm I'm faster than the tour mods at most of the tracks we have in common, except for like Thompson. Right, of course. Yep. Got it. Wow, that's amazing! I'll have to pay attention to that this year at the Derby when you guys are there. I'll uh, I'll make sure I make my way out when you're on the track for practice, and we'll compare that against some of the guys that go out for the tour uh, just afterwards. I, I think we've compared, and I think I'd be I think at some tracks I'd be like fifth, I'd be like fourth, third, third or fourth quick at, in a in a mod in my car. <laughs> like <laughs> I'm like I was like what? I have half as much horsepower and more than half, less than half. So you you've mentioned your dad. Uh, I know that there's more than just you and your dad that make up Redline Motorsports. So, um, who else? Who else makes up the team? So it's me, my mom, my dad, my me, and Poppy, who are my grandparents, mm -hmm. and then all of my sponsors are Grizzled Eye Care, First American Home Loans, Hoss Power, Batting Cages, Five Star Racewear, and DNE Motorsports. Awesome, and I, I'm sure all of those people. Um, are critical to your success and getting to the racetrack and then succeeding on it. So I know how grateful you are for, for all of them. So last question for you, for you, Dylan, is if people wanted to learn more about you or they wanted to follow your career, which is basically just getting going, even though you've been doing it for as long as you have, where can they follow you to stay up to date and see where you're going to be racing? So my dad has, I have Redline Motorsports is on Facebook and Instagram and if you go to nemaracing.com, they have, they post, after every race, they post all of the lineup, the heat race finishes, and then the final, like, feature finishes. And they have some pictures, too. And and they're also going to be doing a new, um, it's not released yet, a new, like, fan page with all the driver bios and all that good other good stuff. Super. So if you want to learn more about Dylan, you can follow him on Facebook or on Instagram. Sounds like uh, the NEMA lights have some cool stuff coming along as well. So you can learn more about the drivers there uh, for more about JDV productions, including information for the duel of the dog, which Dylan and the rest of the NEMA lights are going to be part of. They're one of 13 divisions that are competing over the course of that weekend headlined by the NASCAR wheel and modified tour visit jdvproductions.com. Dylan, thanks for being our guest on episode number seven. No problem. Thank you for having me. You bet. We'll see you and the team on May 6th at Manadnock. We're looking forward to it. Yep. Thank you.